6.30, we have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Phil Myers. On mute. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Yes, yes All right. great. Um, so I'm coming before the board today to discuss uh, my, I purchased the building uh, 30, at 37 Lawrence Plain Road, the old Spice building. Um, and a question has come up about a walk-in fridge that uh, was installed at some point in the past. Um, so uh, I discussed, uh, I talked to um, Tom, uh, uh, the building inspector, mm -hmm. um, and he mentioned that I should come in front of you guys and discuss uh, uh, this fridge <laughs> um, situation. How large is this fridge? <sighs> Uh, so it's a it's a walk-in fridge. I'd say it's uh, a, maybe seven feet tall uh, inside. Um, Footprint wise, uh, length, uh, length, by, length by width, maybe ten feet by by eight, ten by eight. Okay. Uh, I haven't measured it, but I could That's find out. I'm here now. <laughs> okay. And what what is your question about it? So Tom mentioned that you guys were concerned that. Um, the the fridge was apparently installed without any permits being taken out uh for the installation so he said that um i needed to come in front of you guys because um there was a question about it um and he's holding up my um i'm trying to get some building permits through and yeah that was that's about all i know actually so do you want to take it down? Do you want to leave it? What do you want? What, what do you want to do with it? About um, it? I, I'm fine. I'm leaving it in place um, for now. I will in the future want to take it out. Um, but that's uh, way down the road. And when that happens, we'll, I'll, you know, we'll get permits and, okay. you know. Per permit issue aside, that is an issue between you and the building inspector and a plumbing and electrical and stuff like that. Okay. From a site plan approval perspective, it is well within a 10% expansion where you where the where the planning board can waive any site plan approval for. It. Okay. So from a site plan approval, we have the authority or the leeway to say it's fine. Sure. However, from building from building permit point of view, that is a whole different story. Okay. Is this inside or outside? Um, there's access from inside. Uh, it's attached to the side of the uh, to the side of the building. So it's an addition, all right. Yeah, yeah. It's a little yeah. addition. Um, I have pictures too. I can show you if you. So I mean, we we can waive any any approval on that little piece. Okay. Like I said, um, I how does the rest of the board feel on it? Is there any issue with it? I, I think no that's fine. It was. Um, yeah, it was technically a violation of site plan approval for them to put anything in that wasn't shown on the site plan, but it's the building inspector who's the enforcement officer, and um, he seems to be on board with letting it go for the time being, and you had told us in your email you eventually wanted to get rid of it, but it wasn't it's next thing on your to-do list. Right, yeah, that's down the road. Um, so if... Uh, if you guys don't have, um, cause I was, I was under the impression that, um, from Tom that there, he was waiting for the go ahead from, from you guys that the fridge was okay, uh, at, to stay, I think. <laughs> any, any, any other comments from Joe or Mike? I have no problem with it. Okay. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to waive site plan approval for, let's say, uh, roughly an eight by 10 addition unapproved that was unapproved i'll so make them like, i'll make the motion second okay. motion to second any other discussion all in favor aye aye any opposed motion passes four with zip with one absent so i'll i'll put a little note out to the building inspector phil get it to him and hopefully get here with him with the next couple of days and uh then it's up okay. to you then it's just a matter of building building permits beyond that Okay. With you and the bill, like I said, with the building inspector. Okay, great. Um, so I do have one more um, thing to discuss uh, with the board, and that is um, the the north side egress uh, of the building um, requires uh, to be ex uh, for you know the fire chief, the the um, 
as an emergency exit, it needs a landing installed. Uh, my architect drew up plans for a uh, concrete landing uh, with uh, two steps. Um, I believe I sent emailed the plans uh, to to Bill already. Yeah, um, forward to the morale. And so, if um, and I guess my my question is, would would that require uh, a site plan? Um, approval as well or project review or something like that before I get that added onto the building permit? That's just gonna be a door? It's, there's a door already there. Um, the door needs to be oh. raised a little bit uh, to be to code. And then um, there will be a uh, concrete landing with a rail, a handrail. Um, and then there's a, we have to put a walkway uh, wrapping to the front of the building um, for a unobstructed egress, uh, in the case of emergency, uh, fire emergency. So, um, and since that's my understanding is that's, that's a lot of, you know, work on the site, uh, would that require a site plan, um, approval or I guess I'm, uh, yeah. So I'll, I, I will, uh, amend my prior motion to waive further site plan approval for the, the fridge and the uh, walkway steps, landing walkway. That's on the north side of the, the north facing side of the building? Yes. Yeah, north Face, side. The one that faces, uh, if you would, the, the, for lack of a term, the, the horses, yes. the horse pasture. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. A second build motion. I mean, I mean, I just want to finish writing this up here. Okay, we got a motion, a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes four zero one. Great. All right. Anything else? That's uh, that's all I have for today. Um, so thank you nice. guys very much. And uh, thank you for making this available and uh, your work in this regard. So, okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Mr. Reedy. Thank you, Jim. Uh, good evening, everybody. So, I am here. Uh, I think it might be take three for the ANR for Keith Rabine uh, over on North Maple Street. I had sent it over to you. Um, I think the problem last time was uh, a lack of the northerly property boundary. Um, it, it had included, I think, the Lee's property, um, and that, that was not supposed to be included. So the plan that you have in front of you still shows that parcel one along North Maple Street, and then the balance of the land is shown as lot two, and you'll see the, the, the definitive lot line around that entire parcel. So hopefully this time we've got it right and we'd ask for an endorsement. I, we, we've got them, but when you go to try to enlarge the PDF, it came out so blurry, it couldn't be seen. So I got a couple of questions on it, Tom, that's all. No problem. So looking at the plot, um, lot one is the small rectangle closest to the bottom of the page that's highlighted in bold, right? Correct. The next lot up, which kind of looks like uh, it's got a doorway on it, for lack of a better term. It could oh, be yeah, yeah. Okay, that, yeah. Is, that is lot number two. And that is the lot that has frontage on North Maple? Correct. That long line that runs horizontal, that's just a dimension line because I couldn't read it. In the middle of the lot, it says, Yes, the one that says so that's a that's a parcel line. And I think it's just showed up on a deed. And so the surveyor had picked that up because I think it was as identified on the deed. Okay. Um, so that effect effectively is uh, just a dimension line. But that is all that is all going to be parcel number two from if you would north, south north maple, that little roundish radius part, and then a whole lot in the back. And the right of way is at the uh, top, North, the northwest corner. The northwest corner. Okay. Where, where, where is this? 
Northwest is up here. So where's the right of way up here? Could you let that up? Is the point nearest to Rocky Hill Road? Correct. Yeah. I, I have a question uh, for Tom. The parcel number one and number two, the Hess, uh, are lots on North Maple Street, correct? Yes. Now, where is the frontage for the nursing home? The frontage for the nursing home appears to be to the south of lot one. What, how much room is there? It's not, it doesn't appear to be significant to qualify as a frontage for a, a, a building. So they're not touching the property line of the, oh, I shouldn't say they're not touching. They have not changed the property line of the nursing home. There is no change to that lot. That lot exists, has so existed. So lots continues. were carved out. Pardon me? Those two lots were carved out by us, the planning board. So these I mean, two lots. So so the lot for the nursing home exists. What we're doing is taking. So what you see between lot one and lot two, all of that has existed as one lot. And all we're looking to do, and what we're asking for this evening, is to divide that one lot into two lots, being lot one and then the balance of the land as lot two. Oh, that, that was not made clear, but I would like to see, I think I asked for this last time, what the justification is for uh, the nursing home in that area. Was it a ZBA ruling or was it uh, because the, and, and if it was a ZBA ruling uh, and the planning board did sign off for two lots or one lot. I would like that to be made clear to us because theoretically you could be locking out the nursing home for lack of frontage. So but we're I, not, I, this I, isn't their land. I mean, there's, there's nothing here um, that is changing the lot that the nursing home has. So I am looking at the nursing home parcel. And it, according to the town database, has 175 feet of frontage, beginning basically at the back lot, you know, the back end of uh, Home Depot, and but it just has 175 feet of frontage. That doesn't look like 175 feet on this particular map. Well, that this isn't a survey of the nursing home property. Um, well, it, it's being carved out of the nursing home property. No, no this no, is, it's, this it's is a not. little bit. It's, the nursing home's already been carved out of this. Correct. Oh. Bill, can I share my screen? Uh, yeah, let me get back in there. And uh, so share screen. And yeah, one participant can share. That's mine. I don't think that's what I wanted to do. Let's see. Got to go to the menu. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, all participants. Okay. Tom, would the residents on Rocky Hill, could the Rocky, if residents on Rocky Hill have any interest in this? As to where this road's coming out, we can't tell where it is on Rocky Hill Road. Really. Sure. And, and so at, at this point, Mike, we're not trying to get that road approved or that driveway approved. When okay. we do, it is a special permit from this board, and there will be a butter notification at that point. So this is just, this is that first step to divide, to subdivide this large parcel. And then we still, it doesn't guarantee that there can be access off Rocky Hill. We just have, we have to come back and ask for that in a special permit, but then it's only affecting that, what's shown as lot two on this plan. So they probably will have some interest and they'll have the time to talk about it at then. I mean, Tom, you've been doing a, a, a good job trying to educate us, but 
it still is not clear compared to what we usually get regarding, oh, this is a little better. Uh, what we usually get when we have to do something like this is something a little bit more clear. And yeah, I think, I think probably the topographic lines on the ANR are, are probably a little bit confusing. Um, but I think hopefully this will help. So Joe, my, my mouse is over the nursing home right now. And so you'll see there's that frontage that Bill was talking about. And so this lot currently exists. What we have here, you'll see that you've got parcel 61, which has all of this frontage on North Maple Street, and then parcel 61-1. What we're looking to do is effectively combine parcel 61 and 61-1. So Jim, that's where that lot line okay. came in. If you follow that mouse, that's where that, it's the parcel line. And so that's being eliminated because if you follow my mouse, this, you know, excluding that nursing home parcel, which is already carved off. And then it comes about to here and then just comes straight down. All of that is lot two. And then that little piece right here will be lot one. And then Mike, to your, your question, this is where that right of way is. Uh -huh. And when we need that special permit, we'll, we'll notify all of the abutters in that area. Um, asking for and hopefully receiving that special permit. So is that, Tom, that uh, it's right on the curvature of Rocky Hill Road where it takes the sharp curve? Yes, the, I think you can see it because there's an existing driveway there now. So you can see the driveway. And again, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but here's the existing driveway. And then you'll you see that right of way. Right there, okay. Right there. Precise. That's where right. That's where it is. And then I I would suspect Keith would look to have you know he'd probably look to put it somewhere in this flat area here. So is, is, is it a, will it, will it be a shared driveway for part part of it? Yeah, I don't see him. I don't think that he would be building um, another driveway. I think it would come in because that's where the right of way is. So the right of way comes in, comes down, and then crosses the property line, and then he would be on his property. So one would think that the person that owns the house on lot 50 would have some interest in this. <laughs> I, I, would think, I would think so. I, Does I, the I, I, you know, certainly you're making it clearer, but nevertheless, uh, I'd like to see something that is, you know, readable. Uh, you really need, it should be 10x magnified probably. So we, you can read it and you can get the dimensions and the amount of frontage and you're carving two lots out. Can you go back again? Oh, there you go, right there. Yeah. Okay, so lot one is going to be the, the designated lot for a building, for building a house. Correct. There's a building lot here, yeah, so it correct. meets the the yep. dimensions. Um, you've got 175 feet of frontage. You've got 1.2 acres, so about 50,000 square feet, right here. And then for context, obviously, this is the nursing home lot that we saw. So, Tom, I I heard a rumor, and this is probably not fair, but uh, that one of those lots was supposed to be a church. Keith had thought about putting a church there. I don't think that's what's going to go there, but I don't know. I haven't asked him that question um, in a while. I know that when, I mean, again, I think you know me by now, quite candidly, when we had these original discussions, he said, can I put a church there? And I said, yes, you could put a church there. Um, I don't know that that's going to be the, the end use of this lot. So, Well, if you claim Dover Amendment, I'm not going to have any arguments against it, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> and okay, so Joe, so, this is that this is the the balance of the frontage right here. And then this is this is like the beginning of lot two right here. Oh, so I'm not sure that this is very helpful or very visible, but this is the plan that the planning board signed with 175 feet of frontage on North Maple Street for Elaine Manor. 
And that was signed in uh, May of 93. May of 93. And were the other two lots set aside during that plan? They, their land of other people. They were not set aside. They weren't, uh, they didn't, were not owned by Elaine Manor. They were owned by uh, Latham, Kenneth C. and David J. Latham. And that's back, who Keith bought from. Back in 93. Jim signed it, John Devine signed it, I signed it, and Arthur signed it. Where was I, asleep? Uh, <laughs> you know, they only gave us four lines. No wonder I don't remember. <laughs> so um, let me try, um, if you're... <clears throat> you want to stop sharing, Bill? Uh, yeah, why don't you get off of that? Let me just see if I can now get this up so that it is visible to people. Pull it back a little bit. Yeah. I can see it. Why not? That's okay. So that's the 175. Now, I cannot tell from this if the nursing home property was cut out of the larger Latham parcel, but the Latham parcel and the nursing home parcel have been separate for 20 years. Okay. So what's the question? Are we voting on anything tonight, or is we're just, there? A we're just, we're just vote. We will vote to sign an A and R plan. That's all we're going to vote to sign. Okay, I, I would probably refrain from signing that one, in as much I'm I'm one of the designated signers because I don't feel it's quite clear enough. I don't have any dimensions here uh, that I can read and. You kind of like to know the intent a little bit, although it's not important for any and our, but I would like something a lot clearer. Tom, you had the drawing that you sent us was a, PD, a, a shrunken PDF and we go to enlarge it, it doesn't enlarge. Hmm. You showed a drawing just a few seconds ago that you could zoom in on. Same document. I grabbed it from the email that I sent to you or to the, to the planning board. Yeah, Same I don't exact, I did not anything changed. I can do mine. Yeah, I have no, the one that I have that I got from Tom, I can zoom without any difficulty. Now, if the house is not built on lot two, Tom, uh, and if there is a church built on lot one, I hope that is not going to be designated as potential parking for the church. No, I don't. Well, again, I. I or what I will happen to that parcel? Which parcel? Lot the, one? The, the lot uh, on uh, North Maple Street. Sure. So lot one, I think, is going to be sold for a single family home. That's OK. Now, lot two will be what? Keith's homestead. So there'll be a single family home on on that parcel as well. And that home, if you remember when I showed you where the right of way was yep. and I said he'll probably put his house in that cleared field. That's what he's looking to do. So, so ultimately, lot two, lot two on North Maple Street would just be a vacant lot. Would Yes. Because access would be off Rocky Hill Road, you wouldn't. It, it wouldn't look any different. Let's assume that a church were built there and they needed parking. Could he grant a right of way to the church to go onto his property and have parking there? That's a good question. Um, I think there's probably some wetlands issues there. Um, I mean, he, everything else. Let's see if I can. Clearly, do it's not answerable, but you. Yeah, he could. Yeah, and so I'll just I'll show you. 
So this is the wetlands. Here are the wetlands flags around here. So my guess is there might be a single family home here outside of the 35 feet. And then if you were to do anything on this lot, it would have to be here. And if there was a church over here, the parking uh -huh. would be over here. You'd have to come up with some sort of bridge system, I think, to, to be there. And then I guess the question would be, this this right here is the frontage for the balance of Keith's lot. Oh, sorry. The balance of his lot. So I don't know that he'd want to set, and, and part of it is, is what is the use of this lot then? If you're putting parking here for the church, is this use of this lot parking for the church? I don't know that Keith would sacrifice uh, his homestead here for parking for the church right here. So th that'd be my sense of it is you're probably looking at a single family home and then a single family home. And then the this would be the access to that single family home. Um, is Joe back again? The other question is: Can you fit a a square or the width one hundred and fifty by one hundred and fifty in lot two, such that it would not encroach on the wetlands? Probably does. It looks like it could not. I don't know about not encroaching on the wetlands, but I know that it when we did the lot width analysis, I think that we're okay given where these i mean this is kind of wonky for some reason and i so, would, would like to know why the dotted lines are between lot one and lot two is that wetland delineation so in here if you see these little flags yes. that is the outside of the wetland delineation okay so if you follow my mouse you know down here and then along here everything if i could color it in everything in here is a wetland. So I am assuming that if a 150 by 150 square cannot fit into that property, that would not be a buildable lot. So he's trading a non-buildable lot for a buildable lot that doesn't have enough frontage on Rocky Hill Road. The, the 150 by 150 square will easily fit in either lot. It, there is nothing no, I, in the, there is nothing in the zoning bylaw that says a 150 by 150 square has to be buildable lot. Well, if you're going to build a house, it, it you know, doesn't say that the 150 by 150 square has to be all buildable land. Well, and so that's what we've gone through this it analysis. Originally, here. Jim, it was originally put in because of situations like this and people could, and the, when the frontage was a lot less, people could not build a house on it. So it could not be considered a building lot. And that's why the 150 by 150, it perhaps could fit here, but it would have to be a small house. Well, it is gonna have setback issues, but. Setback and side yard issues perhaps. But again, this is, this is the parcel that we're talking about with a house up along North Maple Street. That's correct. So right. what I'm saying, well, it appears that you're you're giving us a non-buildable lot as a quote building lot, and you want to build somewhere else with well, no frontage. That's, that's all one lot. So uh, he's going to take his frontage off of there, but nothing. It, and he's going to have to get a special permit for access across other than frontage. But uh, there is also a notation on the other side of the plan that uh, planning board approval does not uh, constitute, uh, I forget exactly how it's worded, but that uh, planning board approval. Compliance with zoning or something like that, I thought. Yeah, it's there. It's just under the signature. The yeah, uh, planning board right. endorsement is not a determination of the lots shown are buildable lots. Well, for for the audience as well as for uh, for Mike, and uh, so when we sign an A in our plan, uh, we're not endorsing anything. We basically have to sign it. Yeah, we're acknowledging that this uh, these two lots each have 175 feet of frontage on North Maple Street. Correct. Okay. 
we're agreeing that the, sur the surveyor is, is telling us that he's putting his stamp on it and we're agreeing that that meets our zoning minimum. Well, this has been a good uh, discussion because it uh, this is a learning process. <laughs> Although I just wanted to, it, it, it did strike me. Are we sure we are not in the aquifer protection district here? Well, Bill, I, I'm sorry, sorry. Bill, Bill I believe we are. And so I think this lot has, you'll see that they're not equal. So this one's 175 because this, I believe, is outside of the aquifer. I believe this lot, if Keith is to put his house where he'd like to, would be in the aquifer. I believe this is in the aquifer. And so we've got, 200 feet of frontage okay. for this lot. Yep. These, these two lots on North Maple Street, the, if you would, the, the bottom lot and the next one up, forget this, all of the land out back. Right here, I, I can't use my mouse on it, um, but up most of the lot is not in the aquifer. However, the rear portion where he's proposing to possibly get a access across other than frontage, that is in the aquifer. Correct. Yes, this area is in the aquifer, access would be here. So we thought if the, the use, the, the, the residential use is gonna be in the aquifer, then dimensionally, we should conform to what the aquifer requires, even though the frontage is not in the aquifer. So what is the frontage on lot two? I believe it is, let's see, 175 minus, let me see. Boy, this is gonna be a tricky one if it's not 200 feet. It's working on it. It's coming up. It doesn't have it. It doesn't look like they have it. They've got 175 here. Wow. I don't know if I can zoom in anymore. <laughs> Well, I mean, you, you've made a valiant effort, but to me, there's still unanswered questions. And uh, I know it doesn't mean anything when we sign it. It's just a division of land, but certainly... But it doesn't show the frontage. When you go to zoom in... Yep. If you go over to the inset on the other side of the page, it just shows lot one. Lot one is frontage. Does not it shows show the depth of the lot, but it doesn't show the frontage lot line. Who, who prepared this survey? There's no... David Enberg from, is it uh, Berkshire Design? His name's not on it. So what makes it a little harder for us not having it in person, this is actually a two foot by three foot plan. Oh, wow. Oh, so it's a small plan to begin with. But nevertheless, the frontage isn't shown on lot two. Yeah. Well, Jim, do you have any idea when we will be able to go live so that we can get a, a adequate drawing and with a little bigger dimension so we can read no, it. No, because yeah. under the governor's next set of plans, or next reopening plan, Bill, we got it, we got it, what, today, Bill, or yesterday? Uh, yesterday. And I was just looking at the rules, and it appears you could hold a public hearing in an enclosed area, provided you have eight square feet per person for each thousand square feet of building or it was at eight eight people per thousand square feet bill yeah i think eight something people, like that it eight was people a, per thousand square feet not to exceed 25 people regardless of how big the room is 
So we could easily hold our, our meetings at Hopkins Academy. That's not a problem. But if we can't have 25 people, most of these hearings that are coming up, Kevin Michelson, there's probably, we've got six people just with the planning board and John. So that doesn't leave a lot of participants. And, you know, until we can have, I mean, the smaller, no big deal public hearings. Yeah, we could hold a couple of those, but the ones that going to, that have some real interest, I could easily see 30 people showing up. Well, but you know, we don't have, have to have all the participants in the room at the same time. And how do you hold a public hearing for one applicant without allowing everybody in the building to hear what's going on? We can figure something out. You can figure something out. I don't feel like going through that aggravation. The well, you, you, it's possible. It's not. It's not impossible, Jim. It's not impossible. I just, I, these are difficult times. So either we're going to have a public hearing or we're not. I'm but, saying we're not until we can have a decent public okay, hearing. So it looks we, like we're going to put. We're going to. We're going to table this in until we can have a public hearing. No, this A and R plan does not require a public hearing. Okay. The, the public hearing would be required for the, gotcha. uh, what you call it? Access over something other than your funded, funded. But to yeah. sign this well, in our plan, we don't need a public hearing. This is just. But, but the fact that we don't have a dimension on that lot, whatever yeah. it is, one or two on, on North not, Maple not. Street is, is, a, is a significant admission as far as we're concerned. Well, no, it's a defect. It's just a defect. It's Tom, a defect. can you get us? It could be an omission. <laughs> can you get us five drawings? Yes. Get me, get me five drawings. Let me know when you got them. We'll meet someplace. I okay. will distribute them to the other four members. Okay. That way. Good point. You know, get get it. We we can we can handle it that way. I think it's gonna. We're wasting enough time trying to get this on on a computer. It's already the third time, and it's it's. We still have questions. Okay, and I will make sure that this is. It looks like from your GIS, it's three eighty seven total, and we've got one hundred seventy five eaten up here. So the balance is going to be over two hundred feet. I'll just make sure that that's called out on this. Okay. Uh, on the plan that I have printed, and I'll get you paper copies, Jim. Do you want a, a mylar or no. just the paper? Just no, the paper just, copies. Just just, just the because uh, um, we won't sign them. Well, uh, we can work on the mylar. We can work on the copies to be signed once we approve it. Okay. Okay. Then we can come back and you can get me the actual the correct drawings. And so, any one of us can sign. I mean, Bill, Joe, or I can sign those. Okay. We only need one signature. Okay. If we, as long as we approve it. And is there anything else I can do here to, to make it more clear um, to hopefully next time get that endorsement? Just make sure all the dimensions are on there. <laughs> um, actually, if you could show if the plan has what, if it ha does it have a delineated, does it have a described right of way? Or does it just say right of way? It's so the right of way is across this other property. Um, there is a describe. I think it's. I think I had sent it to you guys. I want to say it's either twelve or eighteen feet wide, and it would be across. Well, this. actually, we don't need that for the ANR plan. We, right. we don't need that for the ANR. That's not. That's not the part of the ANR. That'll be part of the submission for the uh, access. Absolutely. Part of the submission for the access will include the contours coming down from Rocky Hill. Oh yeah, yeah, and I think they're already. I think they're already here. Oh, Mike, they... I think put we some just, dimensions. We can, we can, uh, put some contour. Put some numbers on the contour lines. Sure. Because right now, I don't want to start counting contour lines and be wrong. Get the wrong count. That's all. Even well, even if they well, even if they number like every fourth or fifth one. Sure, just for some context. Yeah, we'll we'll get that. And put a scale on this map too. Right? There's no scale on it, is there? Yeah, there's a scale. There's a scale on the bottom. Wasn't there? 
There should be. Not the one I printed yeah. off. Right there. Yeah, right there. Graphic scale, yep. One inch to 200. Yeah, I mean, there, I, there's, there's a, I it's I still, trunk is that a 64 Sorry, acre I parcel. I mean, it's a big parcel. I think that's part of the, that's part of the problem. Okay, let me uh, hopefully finalize this, Jim. I'll 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 coordinate with you uh, yes. for pickup, and then I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Very good. Okay, thanks everybody. Thanks, Tom. See ya. Mr. Jean, you're up. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, this. This is uh, in reference to a change of tenancy through an acquisition, uh, T-Mobile purchased Sprint, and they have submitted uh, to me their sign uh, drawings forwarded to you uh, for your approval. There's no change of use, seeing they're just taking over an existing phone store and continuing with operating as a phone store. Um, so in the package that I forwarded to you, it calls out for the sign being non-illuminated, externally illuminated only, and it's less than 40 square feet. The sign for the pylon is one sign for the directional sign and the storefront sign. There's gonna be just the two signs, one in a, one in a building, one in a pylon, right? Yeah, but I mean, we also, uh, you gave me approval for a directional sign. Um, it's like a monument sign. So when people come in off of the, uh, off of Route 9, they would know where they could turn in. There's an existing monument there. Right. And those are just going to be the same what's there now, just a different name on it. Correct. It's, uh, all same. of the signs are replacing existing signs. So all the signs will be the same. Correct. I don't know name. about the store. I don't know about the Sprint storefront sign exactly, but it's going to be less. The T-Mobile sign is less than forty square feet. On the, but on the pylon and on the monument, it's it's replacing existing uh, panels are the same dimensions as what's existing. Okay. Any other questions? I'll make a motion to approve the signage package. Okay. Second. Motion to second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes four zero one absent. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll get that uh, notice out to the building inspector in a couple of days, Gene, and you should be all set. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Bye. What else do we have, Mr. Dwyer? I don't have anything else. Anybody Bill, else? That, that thing you sent us about something on East Street, what, what is that? I just uh, I need a little more context. I'm not remembering. Wait, wait up, wait up. I'm trying to find it now. I'm sure I didn't. Maybe I imagined it, but I planning board. Oh, so I, th I think signing off on the A and R. Yeah, uh, right. Street? There was agriculture or something, agricultural. Oh, uh, yeah, there is a, uh, that's down. Uh, uh, what's that's just on the other, side, the other side of the bike path, right? Where they want to put that uh, senior senior housing up. Was that the one, Bill? No, this is uh, the, the survey that uh, they're doing for uh, APR for Nibala. Oh, so okay. So oh, that's okay. down by the Young Men's Club. And okay. the... Oh, okay. um, I just sent uh, out the uh, the surveyor said that they were still working on the plan, so uh, they'll come back the next meeting. Okay. So, Bill, usually doesn't the survey have to be completed before the AR ANR is completed? I'm happy that it's it's been completed, but uh... yeah, this one is uh, this one busted past the um, the June thirtieth, so I don't know. Apparently, it's still pending. I don't know whether they are 
have frozen funds for it or what. But yes, now to, nowadays APR is requiring a full survey of, of all the property, the APR and the exclusion. Okay. They used to just require um, a survey of the exclusion, and then it got confusing as to what the ANR looked like. Joe, you mentioned once upon not that long ago something. It used to be a five acre minimum size for sixty one A and APR. You thought that, <coughs> that might have changed. Well, it it can change if there is contiguous property. A contiguous property doesn't mean across the street, or does it mean if there's a right of way between the two pieces of property? That was the only change that I was aware of. Oh, so so they don't have to be touching as long as they're next to each other like that. That's that's a possibility, yes. But that's usually left up to the local board of assessors. Okay. So they would be much happier to have two separate parcels in that they could collect more taxes because maybe parcel number two was four and a half acres and not five. Okay. Am I correct, Bill? Uh, yeah, I think, I think the change was to allow uh if it across the street is okay too okay i know you can't quite physically hand your uh, lawyer's card to me when i start practicing law <laughs> i'll mail you a copy okay okay all right so it's really left up to the local board of assessor to make that that right. that determination yeah like in hatfield for example there's a a, a dike uh, you know, that runs on South Street that yeah. really divides some parcels of land and they were being separated. And I think that was I don't, I, how they finally came out. I should find out. Okay. I was just driving through uh, the Hatfield Meadows on both sides of Main Street there. That monster irrigation system for the potatoes, is that Swazi's? Swazi's has one and Simorowski's have the other. That is one big system. It's huge. Holy, it looks how like big of a pump do they have pumping? They gotta have, there's some serious horsepower putting water to that thing. You can hear that thing roar. Wow. That sounds like you'd see out in the Midwest someplace we're irrigating. Yep. Okay. I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Negative. Oh. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John.